talk first about primality. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so uh, as I told you, interactive proofs, or maybe I didn't mention it, but we were talking about the fact there's a proven, there's a verifier, the verifier is tossing coins, they go back and forth. The big distinction of interactive proofs from classical proofs is that there is a probability of error. So I proved to you something, and with very, very high probability, you know it's correct. Or another way to say that, there's a very small probability that I managed to cheat and prove an incorrect statement. That's what enables your knowledge. So, as I told you, I was always interested in, in uh, number theory. And there was this problem around, which is how do you test numbers for being prime? And a beautiful old result by uh, Miller and Rabin, Solvay and Strassen is an algorithm for testing numbers, whether they're primes or not, a fast algorithm, that has a probability of error. So at the end, you, you run this algorithm, you know with very good probability that your number is, um, is, uh, is prime. In fact, what it is is that if it's composite, you are likely to detect that it's composite. And if you don't detect it's composite, you say it's probably prime. So an interesting question was, can you have a primality test okay, that doesn't have any probability of error? So can we test that a number is prime or composite and be 100% correct? And can you do that without actually factoring the number? And that was uh, work that I really enjoyed tremendously and did with my graduate student, Joe Killian, at the time. I was a in a conference in Arcadia, um, there was some conference center there, and uh, Scoff uh, gave a talk, Rene Scoff gave a talk about some algorithm he had for taking square roots mod p for small numbers. And it had something to do with elliptic curves, over finite fields, and which is something I knew nothing about, but he described what an elliptic curve was, and he had some algorithm for counting how many points are on a curve. And uh, this whole elliptic curve was defined with respect to a prime. So there was some equation, you know, yq, whatever. y squared is equal to x cubed plus ax plus b mod p, and you could count the number of solutions yx. And this defined a group, uh, and he was doing some operations on the group. In any case, he had an algorithm. And, at the, and when I was sitting in this lecture, it's, I started thinking to myself, what if you'd run this algorithm, but you mod p, except you didn't know whether p was a prime or composite? How would the algorithm perform? Would it work? Would it not work? And I asked him that question. And I think it sounded like a really weird question. And he was like, well, it probably would be garbage um, if you ran it mod a p where p was composite. So then I went back to... Cambridge, and I think I invented Scove to come and give the talk at MIT. And he came and he gave the talk again, so I understood a bit more. And then I started talking to, to Joe about the question of what if this prime was a composite, and we started talking about how to use um, this, these elliptic curves, working mod and modulus, which we are trying to tell whether it's a prime or composite. And uh, then the rest is history. We had a primality test based on elliptic curves, where at the end there was it was randomized, but there was no error probability.